Bridge Search is really good. It's so good, in fact, that people often choose to subsume it over some other well-known subsumable abilities like Roar or even Eclipse. But why? Well, first of all, there are no if, ands, and buts when subsuming Breach Search. You just get Breach Search. The numbers are exactly the same as they are on Wisp. But that wouldn't mean anything if the ability itself wasn't very good. Now, if you were to ask 10 people whether Breach Search is any good or not, at least one of them will tell you that it's pretty bad. Because I constantly see people complaining about how weak it is. But that's not true. You just need to use it right. It all has to do with the way Breach Search works. You press a button and it creates a Breach Search. Shocking, I know. This has a radius of 18 meters and it blinds any enemy that has a direct line of sight to you for 16 seconds. This is affected by range and duration respectively. Now, the blind you get here is actually quite good because unlike a lot of other crowd control, it can hit Eximus units through Overguard. This is already really nice, but it's what happens next. Any enemy that's blinded this way has a 10% chance to shoot out a spark when they are hit and a guaranteed chance to shoot out a spark when they die. These sparks will seek enemies within 10 meters of the original enemy and attempt to headshot them with pure radiation damage. This is where it all goes bonkers, because the sparks don't do a set amount of damage. They instead take the damage that triggered them on the original enemy and double it to begin with, because the multiplier is affected by strength, as is the status chance on the sparks, which starts at 20%. The cool thing about Breach Search is that it's good even if you have base stats, and it just gets better as you give it more stuff. The only stat that's not so great is duration, because the base duration on Breach Search is already fairly high, though that also means you can easily fit it onto a setup that sacrifices a bit of duration in favor of something else. Now, in terms of usability, as in why would you use this over something else, it's simple. Craft control and damage. Not necessarily more damage though, because the sparks can't hit the original enemy that created them, it can only hit another enemy that's within 10 meters of the original one. I like to use it with high damage single target weapons to give them a little bit more room clear with the sparks. Or you can use it with AoE weapons and cause absolute chaos. That works too. It's just a really good fit for a lot of different weapons and setups. If you have a fast firing low damage weapon, you're gonna be triggering a lot of sparks on hit. And if you have a low fire rate high damage weapon that can one shot enemies, you're gonna be triggering a lot of sparks on kill. However, the sparks you trigger with a high fire rate low damage weapon are gonna be considerably weaker than the ones you trigger with a low fire rate high damage weapon. It works with primary weapons, secondary weapons, hell, melee weapons. I've used it on a slam setup with the Sampodes and it was great. And as I've mentioned already, it fits very well into any setup that's not nuking any of its stats too much. Basically, if the frame you're playing has a crappy ability and you're not quite sure what to do about it, you might want to try Breed Search. The biggest mistake I see people make with Breed Search is thinking that the low damage of the ability is the fault of the ability and not the weapon they're using. Because as I've just explained, the ability doesn't do any damage itself. It takes the damage you pump into an enemy, multiplies it, and then hits another enemy with it. So if you're using Breed Search and it feels weak without having low power strength, you need a better weapon. You also have to bear in mind that all the damage is converted into pure radiation. So if you're fighting a radiation resistant enemy, the damage is not going to be as good. Though that's usually not a big problem because the only radiation resistant enemies are the infested, which are generally pretty weak. And outside of that, it's just basic corpus, which take 25% less damage to their shields. Now, I'm not saying that Breed Search is the best choice for every scenario. Hell, I barely use it myself. I only ever use it if it like really, really fits my setup. The main reason I don't use it very often, even though it's very strong, is because it's very spammy. If you want to take advantage of it, you have to cast it with every new wave of enemies. And I just don't like that. And that's fine. If you don't like something, whatever the reason may be, it's fine to not use it even if it's very strong. It's just a video game at the end of the day. But it's still worth knowing why it's good, because who knows, maybe you have a setup that would really benefit from it. But you're not gonna know that unless you know what makes Breed Search so good. It's a bit of a tricky ability, because it's not that the ability itself is necessarily very good, it's just that it's good at multiplying the damage you are already doing and spreading it around. You could do everything right on the ability side, but if the damage you are doing isn't very good, the ability itself isn't gonna be very good. And that is pretty much it for the video, so I thank you very much for watching, as always guys, and if there is anything else you would like to add to this, feel free to leave a comment down below. Then, I would also like to extend a special thank you to all the channel members, thank you very much guys, I really appreciate your support, it means a lot to me, and if you would like to become a channel member as well, you can check out the memberships and stuff down below. And I'll see you next time, bye bye.